Hello everyone, how are all my squids doing? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. We're talking about the big T today, technology. We're talking about radar, sensors, electric back massagers, and of course the best wireless 3-in-1 printers you can find for under 200 bucks. No real intro required today, we're talking about the top 10 most exciting new technologies in motorcycling. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at Chin Mounts. Let's get into it. Radar Adaptive Cruise Control is a feature that's been in cars for quite some time now. It still feels a little crazy to use for me as a more analog, old school driver and rider, but this system builds upon traditional cruise control of maintaining a set speed of a vehicle by incorporating radar sensors to monitor the distance and relative speed of vehicles in front of the equipped vehicle. Motorcycle manufacturers were slow to implement this technology in motorcycles for a variety of reasons. Motorcycles require constant speed to remain balanced and stay upright. Rapid and automatic changes in speed could potentially affect the motorcycle's stability, especially during turns or in unpredictable road conditions. Motorcycles are far more dynamic on the road as well, both accelerating and stopping far more quickly than a car. These rapid movements paired with other factors like changing lane positions require the radar system to be far more complex to ensure the convenience doesn't negatively affect rider safety. After fine-tuning these systems to be applicable to motorcycles, manufacturers have begun implementing radar adaptive cruise control systems on bikes like the Ducati Multistrada, the BMW 1250RT, and the Ninja H2SX. One of the newest motorcycles to receive the treatment is the Yamaha Tracer 9GT. The Tracer 9 is by most standards far more approachable in price than some of the other bikes that have been using this advanced tech features, which could be indicative of these systems beginning to become more commonplace on motorcycles. These bikes all use a system from Bosch that uses a front-facing radar that manipulates throttle input and gentle braking to maintain a set following distance. This distance is able to be controlled and set by the rider. These systems will also provide a warning indicator on the dash that alerts the rider if they've begun to approach an object or vehicle too closely. Radar Adaptive Cruise control may not be a necessity for every type of rider, but it can be a total game changer for long distance touring. I'm surprised we haven't seen it in a Goldwing or a K1600DT just yet. I haven't got the chance to ride a radar adaptive cruise control equipped motorcycle, but I'd love to try it out. It's very strange. I bet I'd be freaked out with it at first. That's how I felt when I first rode cruise control on a bike for the first time. It was uh, a peculiar feeling. Unified braking systems, referred to as UBS, have been used in some motorcycles since the 1980s and has since evolved over time with the implementation of ABS. Unified braking systems or combined braking systems distribute the power across both front and rear brakes while only using one of the levers independently. This has been used in the past on bikes from Honda like the CBR 1100XX and the VFR 800, which each lever would activate both brakes through a system of secondary pistons and delay valves. In motorcycles with ABS and unified braking systems, the electronic control unit is used to distribute hydraulic pressure between the front and rear brakes. The system typically applies a great greater portion of the braking force to the front wheel as the front brake contributes significantly to deceleration. This helps prevent the rear wheel from lifting off the ground during hard braking, which could result in a loss of stability. Some UBS systems include an anti-dive mechanism that reduces the front suspension's compression during hard braking. This helps prevent excessive weight transfer to the front wheel. Again, Yamaha is upping the ante with their Tracer 9 GT to not only use a unified braking system, but have this same system be controlled via radars for emergency stop situations. But unlike a car, the Tracer 9's electronic brake assist will not automatically apply the brakes without rider input, which could be incredibly dangerous for a motorcyclist. Instead, if the radar senses you are approaching a vehicle or an obstacle too quickly while you're already applying the brakes, the system will modulate the brake input to ensure enough braking force is used to prevent you from entering a collision. Thus, electronically controlled unified braking system is essentially designed as an aid to the rider in braking as best as they possibly can, by supplying the absolute ideal pressure to both wheels. And of course, if you're a purist, this system can be turned off entirely as well. One of the greatest technologies to change the motorcycle industry is the use of action cameras. Action cameras allow for all types of riders to showcase their most scenic rides or record vlogs or bike reviews. This huge influx of digital motorcycle content online has allowed the culture to grow, introduce new riders to the sport, and keep existing riders excited and engaged. If you yourself want to create motorcycle content of your own, I highly recommend you get a chin mount action camera system for your motorcycle helmet. Chin mounts helps keep your camera secure in the ideal position for recording videos on your motorcycle. They even sell the creator pack, which allows you to mount your camera vertically to get the ideal aspect ratio for social media platforms. Chin mounts are great because they are model specific to your helmet, so you don't get in the way or impede functionality. If you saw me and Brandon race the H2 against the Ducati V4R, we achieved speeds that sent my Insta360 flying, while the GoPro stayed securely mounted to my helmet, thanks to chin mounts. Chin mounts offers free shipping on orders over 20 bucks in the US and Canada, and because you are a loyal Yamanu viewer, you can go 
to chinmounts.com slash yammy and use the code yammy for 10% off of your order as well. Again, that is yammy for 10% off of your entire order. Thanks to Chin Mounts for supporting the channel. Now back to the video. BMW has also developed a radar-based collision warning system for use in their motorcycles. The system is specifically designed to aid in preventing a distracted motorcyclist from colliding with the vehicle in front of them. Before the system actually intervenes with the braking system, the motorcycle will make multiple efforts to alert the rider to the situation before taking over control. The collision warning system is able to be turned off, but in most riding modes, as long as ABS is active, this system will be on as well. As long as the motorcycle is moving between speeds of 20 to 100 miles per hour. If the system is on and you're encroaching on a vehicle at speed in which the system deems unsafe, not only will an icon appear on your dash, but the bike will also deliver a pulse by activating the ABS to slightly pump the brakes to bring attention to the rider. It is only until these cues are ignored that the motorcycle will then intervene and gently apply the brakes automatically. Similar to Yamaha's system on the Tracer 9, BMW's collision warning system will not completely stop the bike on its own as a robot bringing a motorcycle to a complete stop automatically is bound to cause problems. The system is mostly designed to bring attention to the rider and aid in avoiding potential hazards on the road, which is pretty cool. My truck actually has the same feature. It gives like this crazy beeping sound if you're approaching something too fast. Sometimes it's a little too ambitious because I like the late brake in my truck, but uh, you know, that's the system doing the system things. Just kidding. I don't late brake in my truck. Relax, guys. Damon Motorcycles has been putting safety-oriented tech innovations at the forefront of their motorcycle designs since the brand's inception. The most noteworthy technological feat is their co-pilot system. This innovative system seamlessly combines highly advanced sensors and AI technology to create a comprehensive rider assistance platform. Designed by Damon Motors, who are a new age electric motorcycle company that we made a whole video about, the Copilot system is designed to enhance rider safety on the road. At the heart of the Copilot system is its ability to monitor the motorcycle surroundings in real time. Using an array of sensors, including cameras, radar, and LiDAR, the system creates a 360 degree awareness bubble, effectively acting as an extra set of eyes for the rider. This data is then processed by onboard AI algorithms, allowing the motorcycle to detect potential hazards, track multiple vehicles, and provide intuitive warnings in critical situations. One of the standout features of Copilot is its adaptive collision warning and prevention capabilities. When a potentially dangerous situation is identified, the system provides haptic feedback to the rider through handlebar grips, seat vibrations, or helmet alerts, depending on the level of urgency. If necessary, the system can even autonomously apply braking intervention to mitigate or avoid collisions. Copilot's connectivity further amplifies its capabilities through its integration with a mobile app and cloud services. Riders can access real-time traffic data, weather forecasts, and route planning, enhancing the overall riding and experience. Additionally, the system continuously learns from the rider's preferences and riding behaviors, refining its AI algorithms to better anticipate the rider intentions and adapt to their unique style. It is still yet to be determined how effective these motorcycles will be under real-world conditions, but Damon is definitely a company to keep an eye on in the future. And I gotta be honest, I don't know how I feel about these autonomous rider systems. I feel like a lot of us get into motorcycles because we just want a higher sense of control over the machine, and if it's just doing everything for you, well, what's really the point? You know, especially on an electric bike where you're not even shifting anymore, it's riding it for you. Um, not really what I'm looking for in a motorcycle, but cool that the technology is being developed anyways. Honda has been investing a lot of energy into continuing to develop their DCT automatic transmissions to make motorcycling as accessible as possible. DCT transmissions provide a combination of the convenience of an automatic and the control efficiency of a manual. Unlike a single speed CVT transmission, Honda's DCT uses two separate clutches, one for odd gears and one for even. This allows for super fast and seamless shifting. The rider can select between automatic mode or manual mode. In automatic mode, the system shifts gears automatically based on the speed, riding conditions, and throttle input. In manual mode, the rider can control gear changes using buttons, and while riding in automatic mode, the DCT anticipates the rider's intentions and pre-selects the next gear on the inactive clutch. When a gear change is required, the system smoothly engages the active clutch and disengages the other, resulting in a seamless and quick gear change without interrupting power delivery to the rear wheel. Other manufacturers have been utilizing quick shift systems that momentarily kill ignition to allow for the transmission to click seamlessly through through the gears without the use of the clutch. More advanced quick shifters also have auto blippers for equally easy downshifts. Even KTM has been developing their own semi-automatic transmissions that use a centrifugal clutch that is speculated to make its way onto future models. And even MV Agusta has their SCH, the smart clutch system, where using a recluse clutch and a quick shifter up and down, it basically becomes a semi-automated transmission, which is pretty interesting. Yamaha has been working on the self-balancing technology for motorcycles known as the Yamaha Motoroid Concept. The Yamaha Motoroid Concept showcased the company's vision for a motorcycle that could self-balance and interact with the rider in innovative ways. The concept motorcycle is equipped with advanced sensors, gyroscopes, and computer controlled
controlled actuators that allowed it to maintain its balance while stationary and at low speeds. This technology aimed to improve stability and ease of use, especially for new or less experienced riders. The Motoroid concept went beyond just self-balancing. It was designed to engage with the rider through various means, such as recognizing the rider's face and movements, making it capable of responding to gesture and commands. The Motoroid concept uses Yamaha's active mass center control system self-balancing technology, what a mouthful, and haptic human-machine interface that wraps around the hips and is aimed at fostering non-verbal communication between rider and machine. Just make sure you get consent from the Motoroid before you do that. While the Motoroid concept may be a little out there, Yamaha has since tried to adapt the self-balancing technology onto a prototype using their YZF R25. This system uses a six-axis IMU working in tandem with two actuators, one providing small inputs of drive to the front wheel, the other making minute adjustments to the steering. The system not only works while traveling at slow speeds, but the actuators also kick in as the bike sets off, in both cases increasing stability and allowing the rider to move at both walking pace without any incidental tip-overs or drops. Can you imagine riding a motorcycle that cannot be dropped? Pretty crazy. Both Brembo and Michelin have been making huge strides towards utilizing sustainable materials for brake pads and tires. Brembo has developed their Green Nance brake pads, a fun little combination of green and performance, which I cannot really pronounce, which not only wears 15% less quickly than traditional pads, they are made of more sustainable materials. Brembo Green Nance, Green Nance, I don't know, pad compounds are developed without copper and nickel and four ceramic compounds without antimony and asbestos. In addition, they aim to eliminate the use of methane gas in the production process, greatly reducing the amount of CO2 emissions. Motorcycle tires are made of over 200 different compounds, including as various rubbers, metals, and textiles. Michelin has taken steps to find alternative sources for these materials, such as deriving the compound butadienide, buta, butadiene, butadiene. I don't know from ethanol, waste wood, rice husks, and corn, as opposed to petroleum. They are able to make the compound styrene, which is used in synthetic rubber from recycled plastics. These technological innovations might not be making motorcycles faster or safer, but maybe they'll keep environmental agencies happy enough to let us keep using gas-powered engines around a little bit longer. Triumph, who is the sole engine supplier for all Moto2 race bikes, has been investing in the use of biofuels. Triumph claims to be using an ethanol-rich E40 fuel for their Moto2 machine machines for the 2024 season, claiming that investing in this technology for racing could prove beneficial for street bikes as well as an alternative to the influx of electric vehicles. They've stated that their goal is to get all the way to E100 fuel by 2027. Investing in the use of ethanol fuels could eventually allow riders that already own gas-powered motorcycles to move towards a more sustainable fuel option instead of becoming entirely obsolete in a world of electric bikes. The big four have also announced a new research partnership into developing hydrogen-powered motorcycles as well. The group is called Hydrogen Small Mobility and Engine Technology, and each of the four companies have assumed a different role in the pursuit of this new tech. Many transportation and vehicle companies have looked into alternative fuel sources when confronted with the limitations of using solely electric motors. Hydrogen seems to be one of the better alternatives in theory, though it has its own limitations as well. The amount of hydrogen gas needed to travel a similar distance as gasoline would require it around three times the volume. And in order to keep hydrogen in its liquid state, it would need to be cooled to negative 423 degrees Fahrenheit, which obviously presents its own seemingly insurmountable obstacle. Designing a combustion engine to run on hydrogen would also require incredibly complex modifications to timing and fueling. On paper, it sounds like a pipe dream, but it is cool to see the big four come together and work on this project. So the industry professionals must see some potential for success. And our last new motorcycle technology actually comes from Harley Davidson. Boy, I I bet you never thought I'd say those combination of words, but alas, the Harley-Davidson Pan America has been the poster child for the new adaptive ride height. This system lowers the motorcycle a few inches depending on the rider's preload setting when the bike comes to a complete stop. The settings for this system are able to be modified so the bike doesn't attempt to lower and heighten itself during slow speed off-road riding. This could be a game changer for short kings who have previously been limited to bikes with low seat heights should the tech be used on other motorcycles. Damon has also invested in electronically adjustable seating positions which allows the rider to move between more relaxed or more committed riding positions with the push of a button. Motorcycle tech is definitely progressing rapidly. With power gains practically maxed out for many motorcycles, a new emphasis has been put on convenience and rider safety. Not to mention investing in technology for a more sustainable fuel options so we're not all destined to ride electric bikes in 5-10 to 10 years. Please God don't let that happen. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will catch you later.
Fact, in 1992, a cargo ship named the Ever Laurel lost 28,000 rubber ducks and other plastic bath toys in the Pacific Ocean during a storm. These toys, accidentally released, began washing ashore on various parts of the world for years, providing scientists with valuable data to study ocean currents. Goodbye. Man, this right here, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. I didn't want to admit it, but it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, can you guys think of anything cooler than this thing right here? I can't.